This week on TGC News, new suppressors from Ruger and Silencer Co. Hickok 45 gets the band hammer and hashtag not a review on the Nikon spot on system. The new quick detach mounts from Midwest Industries offer a fast and simple way to move optics from gun to gun with no need for tools. Available in 18 different flavors, they're bound to have one that fits your needs. To get 10% off all of their QD mounts, click the link in the description to go to MidwestIndustriesInc.com and use the code TGCQD. Welcome back, my name is John Patton and we've got a lot to cover this week, so the stories are gonna be coming short and coming at you fast. Here we go. First up, Ruger just announced their first ever suppressor called the Silent SR. It's full auto rated for 22 long rifle, 22 mag, and 17 HMR. And it has one of the weirdest looking baffle designs I've ever seen. So I'm very interested to see where this falls as far as sound quality goes. Ruger, in my eyes, produces good quality products across the board typically at an affordable price. So this lightweight compact can coming in at $449 MSRP means we're probably gonna see it at under $400 retail and I'm interested. Hopefully they're gonna have it at the SHOT Show range day next week. Next up, Silencer Co. continues to dominate the suppressor game with two, count them, two new suppressors, the Omega 9K and the much anticipated by me, hybrid. The Omega 9K is simple. It's a full auto rated 9mm can that can also handle 300 blackout subsonic, of course, and supersonic 300 blackout. And it's also less than five inches long. Don't do it. Don't, I know where your heads are. Don't do that joke. It's not funny. <laughs> the hybrid, which I talked about a while back, is Silencer Co.'s all-in-one can, rated to handle everything from 22 long rifle all the way up to 4570 through a series of mounts and accessories. I gotta say, I really, really wanna try this thing. These multi-caliber cans are kind of a jack of all trades and master of none type deal. However, because the bore is large enough to take 458 SOCOM and 4570 down the pipe, I would bet that they do that pretty well. And as some of you know, I'm a big bore enthusiast, so naturally that's my main reason for giving a crap about this thing. However, as I said the first time, a lot of people want one can to rule them all. And a little compromise in decibel reduction might be worth it to trade for using it on every gun you've got. So we've got a new rimfire can, we've got a new 9mm can, and we've got a new big bore do-it-all can. And I kind of want all of them. Are you guys interested in picking any of these up? Let me know down in the comments. And in I wish I had that range in my backyard news, YouTube giant Hickok45 had his channel shut down, not once, but twice in the span of just a few days. On January 6th, the YouTube gun world kind of got rocked when one of the most loved channels in the community was taken down due to terms of service violations on Google+. For those of you that don't know, YouTube and Google+, are very tightly tied together, and the issue was apparently not with YouTube, but Google+. To see someone with such a massive following, and not just that, but also an educational, non-aggressive style, get taken out really, really scared a lot of creators and fans. A lot of people were speculating that this is a politically charged move by YouTube and that they did it because of the president's nonsense recently. Well, unfortunately, although I am not privy to backroom conversation at YouTube headquarters, I highly doubt that they would do something like that. My guess is that this was actually an attack from some anti-gun group, essentially sending a massive amount of reports against the channel to get it taken down. I mean, this whole thing was such a big deal that even some mainstream media was actually covering it. However, after all that crap happening, the channel is currently, as of this filming, up and running. The even more interesting thing about what I saw in the responses from people in Hickok's following was the amount of people telling him to sign up on Full30.com. I totally agree with them. Full30 is not controlled by some big bureaucratic company. It's run by real gun guys. Having someone like Hickok join the creators like myself, Military Arms Channel, NFA Review, uh, Iraq Vet 8888, and tons more would show some real solidarity and I think 
make Full 30 more of a home in the community than it already is. That's a positive thing in my eyes. I know that Hickok and his son John both make a living from what they do, and I certainly don't want to see anything get screwed up by that. So here's hoping to them not having to deal with that crap anymore. And one last thing before we get into Friendly Fire. SHOT Show is next week. Yes, holy crap, SHOT Show is next week. That being said, there will not be a normal TGC News on Monday because I will be concentrating on bombarding you guys with coverage from the show. I plan to release about 10 to 15 videos across the week, so prepare yourselves to see my face a lot more next week. I don't know if they're going to be coming out at night when I get them edited or maybe throughout the day if I have time, but keep an eye out for all kinds of awesomeness. Also, got to give a shout out to my SHOT Show co-host, Ebs from House of Guns, for teaming up with me to cover the show for you guys. If you guys don't know who he is, just type in House of Guns, H-A-U-S of Guns, on social media and you'll find out. He's a great guy. So check us out, SHOT Show coverage, next week. This week's friendly fire question is from Josh Donat on the TGC Facebook page, and he asks, how often should you cycle out or shoot your carry ammo? Great question, Josh. I know a lot of guys are concerned about bullet setback from repeated chambering and just overall lifespan of the ammo. My personal opinion is to just shoot it when you feel that's right. Trust yourself on this. If the ammo doesn't look like it's up to your standards for carry, but it still looks safe to shoot, send it downrange. There really is no set strategy or time frame for this because there are so many variables involved. I hope that helps. My friendly fire question to you guys this week is, do you have any SHOT Show predictions? What do you guys think we're gonna see? Let me know down in the comments below, and if you want your question answered right here, right here on the show, you can post that on facebook.com slash the gun collective or post it on Instagram and Twitter using hashtag friendly fire. And on hashtag not a review, the segment where I take a product and give you guys a hands-on spotlight, we're taking a look at the spot-on ballistic wind meter and app from Nikon. Essentially, the wind meter is an extension of the spot-on app from Nikon, which is a ballistic calculator. The thing that makes Nikon app unique over others is that they actually have a library of their optics built in. Let me give you an example. I've got my P rimfire scope. I'm using a federal 40 grain round and I have a 25 yard zero. My target is at say 136 yards. Once I hit fire on the app, it will give me the BDC values for the optic and the ammo combination at the given magnification. Now here's where the wind meter comes into play. Unfortunately, since it hasn't been windy here for about a month, I'm going to simulate the wind. Using the wind meter, you collect the relevant data and boom, you get holdovers and scope adjustments right on the reticles. No more guesswork, no more wasting ammo to walk the rounds onto your target. This gives you the info you need to get rounds on target. Now, I know the next question is going to be something like, that's cool and all, but how much does it cost? Good question. The meter itself goes for about 35 bucks. The app is another five for a total of $40. Now, compare that to some other wind meters and the price is literally 10 times less with the Nikon system. It's a really good way to take your range sessions to another level with your Nikon optics. If you guys are looking to learn more about this, click the link in the description to head over to Nikon's website where they've got a whole ton of breakdown on how to use it and things like that. Bring your EDC game to a new level with Keybar, offered in tons of different finishes from aluminum to titanium to carbon fiber and tons of other fancy options. You can stack these with things like a titanium comb or a USB flash drive. The only limitation is your mind. Use the code TGC10 to get 10% off your entire order at keybar.us. And unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. Guys, you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you at SHOT Show. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Barrent Apparel. Click the link in the description to learn more.